My name is Larry Becker and I'm one of the hosts of a popular web-based TV show called D-Town TV, where we share tips and tricks to help shooters make their photography better. Today I want to talk to you about capturing better wedding photography, but I'm not just going to concentrate on camera technique. I want to talk to you about some insights that I hope will help you think a little differently about what kinds of things to photograph when you're shooting a wedding, specifically still life images. When it comes to capturing a great set of wedding images, it takes more than a nice DSLR. These days it seems like everybody who has a DSLR thinks they can shoot weddings. And while the pixel data might be a bit better than what comes out of a point and shoot, a DSLR in the hands of an amateur won't yield much more than crisp snapshots. And look out if they have a speed light. Those wedding snapshots will have hard shadows and probably even blown out highlights in the foreground and dark fuzzy objects in the background. Good wedding photography is usually a collection of thoughtful images captured by a professional who knows how to capture moments, how to capture some of those fairy tale visions, and capture some of the feeling of the day. Now obviously some of this comes from meeting with and getting to know the couple in advance. Some of it comes from knowing your equipment and of course knowing how to capture the images that you want in typical low-light environments where weddings are held. But more than that, good wedding photography displays a style. And one of the ways to enhance your style and amplify the storytelling aspect of the wedding is to mix still life photography with other event style images you capture during the wedding and the reception. The reason this works is because it's how humans see things. We might look at a big scene and take in the big picture, and a moment later we find ourselves focused on someone's hands or the shirt they're wearing. Movie and TV directors use this technique all the time, where they establish a big scene, and then they zoom or jump to a close-up of an object in the scene. Even TV news interviews occasionally cut away to a close-up of the hands of the person being interviewed. So still photographers can use this close-up image technique to enhance the impact of the wide shots. Some examples could be a close-up of a wedding dress to capture the delicate intricacies of the beading or the way the buttons go up the back. Rings on a pillow, the guest book, and the hands of the bride the moment the groom places the wedding ring on his new bride's hand. These things not only enhance the wide shots, they remind the bride and groom of the moments they shared while exchanging their vows. Besides obvious things like cake, the rings, the bride's bouquet, there's a host of things you should consider shooting close up as a still life. Portraiture can have a great impact if things like attractive jewelry, a unique gown, or an unusual tuxedo have been captured. But just because you're thinking about still life photography, don't think small. Images of the wedding venue are just as important, if not more so. Obviously, not every lens will let you get as close as you want to when you're shooting still life images. For example, many kit lenses just don't have the ability to focus close enough to the subject you're shooting. It's not unusual to see macro lenses in the camera bag of a wedding photographer who shoots still life images so they can get close. Another thing that adds a great deal of character is using a prime lens with an especially wide aperture like f1.8 or f1.4. When you shoot with these lenses, your focus plane is going to be very shallow and the focus in front and behind the plane of focus will quickly blur and fall off into one of those dreamy looking images. Now this is nothing new to wedding photography by any means, but if you're new to shooting weddings and you just can't seem to figure out how photographers manage to capture such beautiful images with such a small slice of the image in focus, the answer is a wide aperture. By the way, if this is new information to you, it will help to know that f1.4 is a much wider opening or aperture than f4.5 or f8. So if you're trying to get that special effect with just the bride's eyes in focus and the rest of her all blurry, you won't be able to do that with your f3.5 to 5.6 kit lens. One final tool I want to mention here is your flash. I can't recommend strongly enough that getting your flash off the camera will almost always improve your pictures. 
David Zeiser is a world-renowned wedding photographer, and he tells a little joke with his flash units. He says, you can tell how good a photographer is by looking at their flash. This is an amateur. This is a good photographer, and this is a pro. And I would add to that, this is a pro who's been to a seminar. One of the things many photographers look for is something big and white they can bounce their flash off of, like a wall or the ceiling. That's because small light sources, like a flash, tend to create hard shadows. But if you bounce your light off a large wall, the whole wall becomes your giant light source, and that tends to fill up a room with light, which also will soften shadows. If you've got a photographic assistant, having them hold a large reflector is another option, since it will become a large light source. Even though it's not as big as a wall, sometimes white walls aren't available and ceilings are too high to bounce your light. Ultimately, anything you can do to make your light source bigger will make the light coming from it less harsh. On the other hand, there might be times when you want to focus your light on a subject and almost spotlight it. In that case, you might want to use something like a snoot to create a beam of light that highlights your still life work almost like a spotlight, and it doesn't light up anything else in the vicinity. Here are a couple of snoots available at B&H. This one is actually a flexible bounce reflector from Rogue. It's called a flash bender. Because of how it's made, it can be shaped into a tube, making it a snoot as well. The other one is a strobo snoot. One of the strengths of this structure is that you can easily insert small disc gels for special effects. Now, even if you're new to shooting weddings, you've probably already got a shot sheet of poses you're working from. But don't let that keep you from seeing and capturing the little things, the still life images. A few great still life images in the mix of your wedding shots will make your entire collection even better. With a look at still life photography in weddings, I'm Larry Becker. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.